Uh, here are studies where they've basically taken people, put them on low-fat diets and compared that with putting people on low-carb diets where they have not restricted calories. The low-fat diets restricted in calories, low-carbohydrate uh, diets not restricted in calories. On the right-hand side, I've put whether the result was statistically significant or not. Basically, in every case here, all right, whether it was statistically significant or not, uh, the low carb won out okay, in, these, in these situations. I tried to look as, as much uh, of the evidence as I could find and this is what I found. Now, statistically significant, is that important? Mm, I'm not sure, okay, because sometimes studies have to be quite big to show the statistical significance. Okay? And if you went to someone and said, look, there's basically um, two options here. You can go on this calorie-restricted diet that's going to make you hungry and miserable, okay? And you're going to have to consciously restrict how much you eat, or you can go on this other diet. And by the way, the former diet, you'll lose an average, you know, in studies, of 11 kilograms. The other one, 15 kilograms. I know which one they generally would choose. And also, if you said to them, but by the way, that difference in weight from the studies is not statistically significant, they'll still go, I'll take the 15. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. I just want to finish with this. Does exercise promote weight loss? The answer to that is not really. Okay, If you do aerobic exercise, I know it all makes sense, but if you add that to a diet, let's say you lose, I don't know, 20 kilograms uh, over six months. Instead of losing 20 kilograms, if you add exercise to it, you've lost 21 on average. That's what the studies show. You lose an additional couple of pounds. Okay, Now, you might have done literally dozens of hours of exercise in order to achieve that additional loss in weight. And most people, once they understand that, are not really prepared to do it. And they're probably, by the way, I'm a reformed runner. Okay, so <laughs> when, uh, when Denise said she was a reformed vegan, I've never been vegan. In fact, I've had in my life two vegetarian girlfriends and it was torture, torture. <laughs> for a whole bunch of reasons. And so there was I, oh yeah, I should be really sensitive, and I was just permanently hungry. Permanently hungry is a terrible experience, okay. Okay, so the fact is, is that exercise doesn't really work that, that way and that well, and why is that, anyone? Any thoughts, why does, why? Makes you hungry. Makes you hungry, and what else? Here's the truth, it doesn't really burn that many calories. And anyone that exercises on a piece of equipment that count calories will know this, okay? So you need to be careful with exercise because it doesn't really work as we would anticipate that it works. What works, I think, is resistance exercise. Could be slow burn, okay? <laughs> doesn't have to be. There's other resistance exercises out there, by the way. Um, and good generally for, in my view, strengthening the body, toning the body, that's important. It can really improve how someone looks once they take their clothes off, just with even just uh, exercises that you're doing in the comfort of your own home on your bedroom floor. Okay, and I also am quite a believer in high intermittent exercise, uh, high intensity rather, intermittent exercise. Okay, this is basically where people will, I don't know, be sprinting, doing something on a bike or sprinting, you know, for eight, ten seconds usually, and then they slacken off for 20 seconds, something like that, and they repeat that. It is a very good way, in my experience, for people to get very fit, to lose some fat if that's what they're interested in, very, very quickly. It's not for everyone, it's brutal. Anyone here ever done high intensity intermittent? It is brutal, okay? It's not an easy thing to do, but it's very time efficient and generally very effective. So here's a few things not to do, in my view, okay, if you want to optimize your health and lose weight. Don't consciously restrict calories. Don't eat a low-fat diet. Don't get too hungry. Don't shop for food when you're hungry either. That's just asking for trouble, as you know. Uh, don't engage in prolonged periods of aerobic exercise. I say that as a reformed runner, as I said. Uh, don't let odd slips or splurges derail you. You know, very often people, when they're on a diet, and I'm really anti-diet, obviously, as you can tell, um, will think that, you know, they're doing quite well and then they, they go out and then they, they weaken and they eat tiramisu and then that's it for the next few months, they're eating rubbish, right? So if you want to, you know, go off piste, as we say, that's fine, but what I, what I suggest people do is make a mental sort of stop point on when they're going to stop doing that thing. So, for example, if I go on what you would call a bucks party, but we call a stag weekend, okay, I know it's going to be messy, I absolutely understand that, I'm driving there knowing that, but I've, in my head I'm going, Sunday night is when this stops. Okay, so when I get up in the morning, on, on, I don't eat bowls of cereal on Monday morning and toast. Okay, I eat exactly what I normally do. Do you see? So that really does help people generally, you know, have the odd, you know, indulgence and slip up or whatever you want to call it, and do it with impunity. All right. Uh, don't see changes as a diet. Okay, here's a few things to do. Uh, focus on the quality rather than quantity of food. Of course, more emphasis on protein and fat probably overall. Less on rubbishy carbohydrate. Um, I generally uh, advocate that uh, about 80% of the diet for people that aren't actively losing weight would be made up of what I would regard as primal, paleolithic, whatever you want to call it, foods. Meat, fish, eggs, you know, some nuts if they like, fruits and vegetables, not too much fruit if they're losing weight, generally speaking, that sort of stuff. Not 
as I've said, <laughs> the sort of the rubbish stuff that we're generally recommended to eat. I also um, recommend that people don't allow themselves to get very hungry. I, I can't tell you how important this is as a factor. So very often I'll say to people, look, the less hungry you are, the more weight you'll lose. And once they understand this, they really get that in their head and they go, oh, that's I can see how that would work, okay? So on a scale of naught to 10, where naught is no, hu no hunger, and 10 is I'll eat this podium, okay? Then I generally, <laughs> gen and you know what that feels like, right? Um, you generally, in my view, want to be about a six or a seven before you eat. You don't want to be not hungry. You don't want to be starving either. I'm a big fan of walking as an ex-runner now, and I do believe in resistance exercise. And if you really want to push it a little bit, a bit of high intensity, if that's your thing, okay? I also believe in, you know, getting your mindset right and very much working towards whatever goal it is that you're looking to. So focus on the positive, not trying to get away from the, the negative, if you like. And also, I really encourage people to see there's not such some sort of penance this is just healthy eating. This is how we should be eating. This is not a diet. It's not something to get on and get off necessarily. Of course, you can have your occasional, you know, off-piece moments, right? But this is basically something positive, right? This is, this is the sort of thing that allows people, okay, to lose weight if that's what they're seeking to do, but fundamentally feel so much better and have a much more functional relationship with food than they used to have, okay? So, um, this doesn't work for me. Someone put this up yesterday, was it, was it Monique? Was it you, Monique? It doesn't really, yeah, exactly, it doesn't work for anyone particularly, in my view. Okay, so there's a number of different uh, ways we could criticise this, but quite frankly, we're not going to. Here's, I like this. I saw this on the web. Don't eat processed cat. That's fantastic. I like that, all right. Here's another one I like. Yeah, I, that kind of works, okay. But you know what? There's always people that are just going to take it that step too far. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Dr. John Briffa. Or or as he told me one time, don't call me doctor, call me John. So I did want to let people know uh, your book, Escape the Diet Trap, is on Amazon. Uh, it's a porn expert, so you can go in there and order it. Um, and his podcast is a good look at good health. If you've never heard, if you enjoyed what you heard today, yeah. right? He does. Uh, who's your co-host on that? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So let me just explain this. I, uh -oh. <laughs> I started podcasting a few months ago, and I did it with a, a very good friend of mine called Carl, who I was talking about this morning. Actually, who's a fantastic friend. Unfortunately, right? He had a baby. No, not he didn't have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, his uh, girlfriend had a baby. And then I decided, well, I'll, go, I'll try and do them on my own. But I lost the will to live, and I'm also quite busy. I, you know, and I, I've stopped doing them, is what's happened, OK? So I, I met him about two weeks ago, OK? And there he was with his baby in a sling, because he's quite a hippie, a bit like me. And, uh, and I said, look, would you consider resuming once you're a bit more settled? And so the answer was yes, he'd definitely consider it. That's not a yes. If you know Carl, that's not a yes. That's yes, I'd definitely consider it. I don't know what's going to happen, but if I can get him back on board, I'd love to start doing them again, because actually I really enjoyed them. I don't like doing things I don't enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for watching highlights from the 2012 Low Carb Cruise, and stay tuned for full details on the 2013 Low Carb Cruise. Visit lowcarbcruiseinfo.com. Hello everybody, I'm Pam Young and I wrote a book called The Mouth Trap, The Butt Stops Here. And it's not a diet book, it doesn't tell you what to eat, it tells you how to mind what kind of diet you're going to be on. If you find yourself on any diet and you're starting to lose your willpower and you need a little help, The Mouth Trap, The Butt Stops Here will really give you some insights on how to really enjoy every single bite you take. The very first line in the book is, I don't know about you, but my mouth gets me into more trouble than any other hole in my body. To order the book, go to the home page of my website and you'll see a tab that says, Lose Weight.